It is now 723 and still ahead this morning. With this cold winter weather hitting, you might be using heat more in your home. Well, probably. We'll hear from an expert on how to avoid fires some heaters could cause. Welcome back. This week, deadly fires have been a major topic in the news across the country. Many lives were lost in both Philadelphia and New York City last week. That's right. It is easy to overlook heating safety, but heating is the second leading cause of home fires in the state. That's a statistic today's guest wants to bring down. We now welcome Michael McLear, president of Escape Fire Safety. Good morning, Michael. Thanks so much for being here. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So let's talk about space heaters. It is chilly. A lot of people using them this time of year. What tips do you have for everybody making sure that you safely use those space heaters? Sure. As the temperatures drop, we tend to dial up those space heaters. And uh, space heaters are good for supplemental heating sources, but we never should use them as primary heating sources. If you are going to use a space heater, it's very important that you use supervision, especially if you have pets or young children, and make sure that we turn that space heater off when we go to bed or when we leave the room or leave the home. It's also important we make sure we give that space heater space. We need to give that space heater at least three feet of space uh, away from anything that can catch fire. That could be your furniture, it could be clothing, um, and never use the space heater to dry gloves or mittens or anything like that. That certainly increases our fire risk. Always plug that space heater directly into a wall outlet, never use extension cords, and never use power strips. Mm. And, uh, you know, if the unfortunate happens and a fire does start in your home, how do you best prepare your family to escape safely? So we always talk about it's important that families have and practice a home fire escape plan. Escape plans include knowing two ways out of any room. One way could be a door. The second way out could be a window. And if you're living in a high rise like the folks were in Philadelphia and in even uh, New York City, it's very important to make sure you're talking with your building management. In some cases, high rises, it may be safer to stay in your apartment and make sure we take wet clothes or wet towels and place them at the bottom of the doors to make sure we prevent that smoke from coming in. Making sure if we are able to get outside, we go outside to a designated meeting place. It could be a tree, it could be a neighbor's house, a sidewalk at some place outside away from your home that everyone can go and await the fire department's arrival. And it's very important that people never, ever go back inside, not for people, pets, or things. That's where we tend to see a lot of loss of life is people that initially make it out, go back in for something, and then they don't get back outside. It puts our firefighters and all of our emergency responders in harm's way. So once you're out, always remember, get out and stay out and stay at that meeting place. And now that we have snow, make sure your meeting place is not blocked by a snow pile very important to remember. Mm. And Michael, this is what you do. So seeing the devastating fire in New York where 17 individuals were killed, does that hit home for you? It does. And in that report, it looks like that a door did not properly close and allowed that smoke and fire to continue to spread. So this is another important reminder. Families need to sleep with their bedroom doors closed. If they find that there's fire in a room before they leave the home, close that door that closed door will stop the spread of smoke and fire and firefighters have been really promoting that uh, all across the country for the last several years because that closed door can buy you time so that you can get out and stay out that second way if you have to go out a window for families that have bedrooms upstairs it's really important that they have a home fire escape ladder they can place it right on their windowsill those can be purchased at any big box store any place that smoke alarms and fire extinguishers are sold escape ladders are also something that we should have and practice that with everyone in your family if you have young children practice using that escape ladder on that first level window because young children may not always be ambulatory and it's easy to be able to try and get outside uh, but make sure that we always practice fire safety. And if we have older adults who may not be able to get out on their own, maybe relocate their bedroom close to an exit on the first floor. Make sure that we develop that escape plan so that everyone, young and old, can make sure they get out and stay out. Yeah, Michael, such simple tips that can make such a huge difference. Is there anything else that you want to add that you think people really need to know this time of year? Sure. In the Philadelphia fire, initial reports are that a child may have been uh, unsupervised 
and may have either been playing with a lighter or a stove. So it's important if parents or caregivers have that uh, indication that their children are misusing fire, reach out to your local fire department or reach out to the school counselor. We have excellent resources across the state and especially here in West Michigan that we can pair up resources to be able to change that behavior, empower children to make safer and healthier choices. Curiosity is natural, but obsession and fascination with fire is not. Mm -hmm. And the earlier that we can correct that negative behavior, the less likelihood that young child is gonna start a fire which can put everyone in our home and everyone in our family at risk. All right, Michael, thanks so much for joining us. Some really great tips for our West Michigan viewers. We appreciate your time. Thank you. All right.